Aura Ring versus Ultra Human Air, the two hottest options when it comes to fitness and sleep tracking rings. Aura has been around now for quite some time. They're on their third iteration, Gen 3. I was wearing Gen 2 since 2019. I got Gen 3 about a year ago, 2022. And they're widely considered the best option when it comes to fitness and sleep tracking. Ultra Human released their ring last year, the first gen. This is now their second gen called the Air. It's improved, it's thinner, it's better. And today we're gonna to find out which one should you spend your hard earned money on. Let's start with the design and hard product. So Aura Ring has these three humps on the Palmer surface for your various sensors and Ultra Human only has one. Now for Aura, I'm actually a size 10, but for Ultra Human, I'm a size nine. And I think part of that reason is because of these humps, they are, you know, encroaching into the, the space where your finger goes, so it feels tighter at a given size. So 10 on the Aura feels the same as nine on the Ultra Human Air to me. In terms of thickness, Aura Ring is 2.55 and Ultra Human is 2.4, which sounds like they're pretty close, but I don't know, holding them side by side, I feel like the Aura Ring is substantially chunkier. And even when I wear it, I can feel my other fingers you know, hitting the sides of it, which is, is less comfortable. Whereas with the Ultra Human Air, not as much of a problem. Part of that could also be the smaller size with the Ultra Human Air, smaller diameter, but this is definitely more comfortable. The Aura Ring actually has two design options. So this is the Gen 3 I bought last year with the Heritage design. So it has this little ridge on the top and that goes on the dorsal surface of your hand so that you know, you know how to keep the sensors properly aligned. Whereas the newer Horizon, which is my preferred style, has a tiny little dimple on the Palmer surface to help you keep it aligned. Their standard black is pretty glossy and it's cheaper, which is why I bought it, but I don't like it as much as the Stealth, which I think looks a lot better. It's this matte finish, but it is much pricier. We'll get to pricing at the end of the video. The Ultra Human Air in comparison is perfectly round and smooth all the way across. So it's harder to know if it's properly aligned on your finger. So the two ways are number one, you just take it off, reposition it, put it back on, or you just look down the barrel of your finger and then try to get that sensor in the correct position. On to features and performance, let's talk sleep tracking because that's what I think these are actually best used for. These both cover very similar metrics with some small differences, respiratory rate, body temperature, things like that. But the key things, heart rate variability, resting heart rate, sleep, sleep stages, all that stuff is included on both. Now keep in mind at the end of the day, neither of these are gonna be nearly as accurate as the gold standard, the polysomnograph, but consumer sleep devices have come a long way, especially with Aura. Aura has multiple studies that demonstrate between 80 to 90% accuracy compared to the gold standard, depending on the exact metric that you're measuring. But for Ultra Human Air, I haven't been able to find any studies. Comparing the data between the two, I can't actually say which is more accurate because I'm not comparing them to the gold standard, but based on the track record, the research, just the multiple iterations and years in the industry, I would guess that Aura Ring is probably more accurate. So here are a few nights comparing the data between the two. And you can see that for the most part, they're pretty similar. Keep in mind, everyone has their own relationship to the data and you don't wanna develop orthosomnia where you develop such an unhealthy obsession with your sleep tracking and your sleep metrics and improving your sleep that you paradoxically get worse sleep. So rather than watching it every single day, what I try to do is look at trends over time and if my sleep is getting better or worse based on other behaviors that I'm implementing in my life. One thing that's a little bit annoying is that with the Aura Ring, my nighttime heart rate data oftentimes has gaps in it. It just seems to be very sensitive and finicky and need, it needs perfect conditions to give you the data. I've tried, you know, I wear them on, I swap sides, I put them on different fingers. The problem persists and it happened with both my other Gen 3, the one that I bought, the, the shiny black one, as well as the Stealth one, same issue on both. Doesn't happen every night, but happens often enough to be concerning. Whereas with Ultra Human, never had that problem. Both of them will also track your O2 saturation, your SpO2 at night, which is designed to help catch things like sleep apnea and other breathing disorders. One thing I was pleasantly surprised by is how both handle fragmented sleep. So I went to the airport at like 5.45 to drop off someone at the airport. And I woke up super early, dropped them off, came back and slept. And both the Ultra Human and Aura were able to acknowledge that I was not asleep during that time, but then counted it as a single long sleep. With the Ultra Human, you do need to like acknowledge it as a nap later in the day. It's a little bit more of a, a few more steps, but not a huge deal. Whereas with the Aura Ring, they automatically got it. In the earlier versions, like when I first started using them in 2019, they did not do that. And it would just count your initial sleep as sleep. And then after that, if you napped, you were SOL. Next up, temperature tracking. Both are gonna track your temperature, but they have different implementations. Aura Ring is gonna tell you a relative change compared to your baseline. So you need to wear it for some number of days or weeks. It'll establish a baseline and then tell you plus or minus one, two, etc. Aura also only measures while you sleep. Ultra Human is the opposite. So 
First in that it's gonna give you a precise number, not just a relative change to baseline, and it's gonna measure both while you're awake and while you're asleep. Since these are rings on your fingers, they're measuring your temperature at your fingers, not your core body temperature. So it's not gonna be as reliable and accurate at measuring things like having a fever, but you can see trends and that data can be useful. So as an example, here in April of this year, I got sick with the Rona yet again, and Aura Ring caught that. Now I haven't gotten sick during the time of wearing my Ultra Human, so I can't comment on the temperature tracking in that regard. Ultra Human does clarify this by calling it skin temperature, not body temperature, because people might be thrown off. Hey, why is my temperature high 80s to low 90s? It's gonna be lower because it's on your extremity rather than your core body temperature with the normal being 98.6. Now, I'm not sure how useful it is to have daytime temperature tracking. What I do like about Ultra Human is that they do separate out the data of your sleep versus your non-sleep temperature. But during the day with movement, like you're washing your hands under cold or warm water, you take the ring off because it's getting tight, you put it back onto a different finger. It cools off briefly when you take it off, warms up when you put it back on. All these little things are changing it so frequently and there's so many variables that I don't really trust the daytime readings. I think there's much more utility in just the nighttime temperature. Next up, fitness tracking. And I'll start by saying, both are pretty useless or not nearly as useful as many other fitness trackers. As an example, I did a road trip from the Bay Area to Vegas and I was driving for like eight or nine hours straight or I thought I did a workout. Also, if you're doing any type of strength training or other activity that requires you know, a strong grip, these are thick rings. So they're gonna be uncomfortable to wear while you're doing those activities. And then you're also gonna scratch them up. I tried doing lat pull downs while wearing my Ultra Human and it felt uncomfortable and I also just promptly scratched it. Both will import your workouts from Apple Health, but it sounds better in theory than it actually is in practice. If you want the device to actually log your heart rate while you're working out, then you need to start it from their respective app, which is of course definitely less convenient than just tap tap starting it from your Apple Watch or Garmin or whatever fitness tracker you use. And if you do let it import a workout, it's gonna try to use its own heart rate data while you were doing that workout. So for example, I did a 10 minute hit bike ride and Ultra Human gave me a max heart rate of 83 beats per minute and an average of 81, but my chest heart rate monitor, which is of course very accurate, read 135 as my average and a max of 168. So then I said, okay, let's actually try starting the workouts from the app, not having it just import. And I did a zone two bike ride for one hour, started it on both Ultra Human and Aura. Aura was only a few beats off from my chest strap. Apple Watch was by far the closest and Ultra Human was way off, not even like, 10, 20, 30 beats per minute off. Now, speaking of integrations, both can obviously read from Apple Health, but they can also both write to Apple Health, but there are a few differences. Aura Ring has Ultra Human Beat in that it does write respiratory rate and sleep, but Ultra Human does write body temperature, whereas Aura Ring doesn't. And it's confusing to me why Ultra Human doesn't write sleep, because I think that's the main functionality. Now, to me, Apple Health integration is super important because two main reasons. Number one, it allows other apps to read the data that those apps wrote to Apple Health. So it, it allows for better integration across various apps. And then the second reason is that in case something happens to that third party app that's writing the data, maybe the company goes out of business or your data gets corrupted or whatever happens, Apple Health is gonna be much more robust and a, a stable single repository where you can maintain all of your health data long-term. All right, on to unique features. I love that with Ultra Human, it has this circadian rhythm feature and it reminds you about things like light exposure and caffeine to let you know when you need bright light in the mornings, when your light exposure is gonna have a neutral effect on your circadian rhythm in the middle of the day. And then at nighttime, when you're extra sensitive to light, that can disrupt your sleep, right? So you wanna avoid bright lights and overhead lights as an example. I love this feature and Huberman would be proud. The wrap was also initially designed for CGMs. And it's cool that you have two tabs on the bottom, one for the ring, one for the CGM. I'd like to see some integration whereby they use data from your sleep to provide insights on your blood sugar and vice versa. We know that having poor sleep impairs your glucose control for the next day. And we also know that eating too late at night and having you know really high glucose excursion right before you sleep is gonna cause compromised sleep quality. And I don't think it'd be very difficult for the app to pick that up and then you know call it out and give you some actionable tips, et cetera. Now, as for Aura Ring, they do have better third-party integration than Ultra Human, which makes sense. They've been around for a lot longer. As an example, Strava for your workouts. But then again, let's be real. If you are serious about your fitness, you're probably not using your Aura Ring to track your bike rides or your runs. And then of course, natural cycles, which acts as 
natural birth control, whereby it takes data from your Oura Ring body temperature. Oura Ring also offers respiratory rate data, which is based off of your respiratory sinus arrhythmia. And what that means is that when you inhale, there's negative pressure in your lungs, causing your heart rate to increase. When you exhale, there's the opposite and it causes your heart rate to decrease. And this is of course very closely tied to heart rate variability or HRV. On to battery life and charging. Both of them use a charging puck and they look very, very similar. The theme here is that Ultra Human is taking heavy inspiration from Aura, the app interface, the data, how it even displays that data, the way the product looks, the charging puck. Now keep in mind, the charging puck is specific to your ring size, so you can't actually swap chargers. If someone else in your household or a friend has a different size ring, they will not be able to use your charging puck and vice versa. Both last about five days. I wore both of them continuously and about three and a half days later, they were both at 32% exactly. The battery life is super adequate. I don't think it's gonna be a problem for anyone because anytime you shower, you're gonna take this off, just put it on the charging dock, you're gonna to top it up. Or if you're like me and you only wear them at night, then just leave them on the charger during the day. And then again, you're all set. The charging dock on Ultra Human is so annoying. With Aura Ring, there's a light on the dock that shines bright to indicate that the ring is charging. Cool, makes sense, I get that. Ultra Human has a light that is always on, whether the ring is charging or not. So when you take it off and you try to go to sleep, the dock emits this bright blue light and I either need to unplug it or turn it over. Turning it over doesn't really block the light properly. So then I should probably just put on electrical tape. A really stupid and silly oversight. It's a sleep tracker designed to improve your sleep and it's not uncommon to be charging these in your bedroom, especially if you mostly wear it at night and yet it emits a bright blue light when you try to sleep. All right, onto the price. Ultra Human Air comes in at $349. You can also get credit for trading in another ring, but it's a pretty paltry sum, like $50 for an Aura Ring Gen 3, $25 for an Aura Ring Gen 2, and $65 for the original Ultra Human R1 ring. The Aura Ring starts at $299, but goes up to $549, depending on the color and the style. So for the Stealth Horizon, it's $449, and for the Black Heritage, it's $299. But with the Gen 3, they of course went to the subscription model. So you pay not only for the device up front, but also subscription. The first six months are free, but then after that, it's $6 a month or $72 per year. And if you were an early adopter, like you had the Gen 2 and then upgraded to the Gen 3, right when it was released, you get a lifetime subscription, which is what I did, which is why I went from Gen 2 to Gen 3, but I don't think they're offering that anymore. These devices aren't gonna last forever either. So let's say the Aura Ring lasts three years. You're looking at a cost between $500 and $750. Huge advantage to Ultra Human because you just pay for the ring and then you're done. There's no additional subscription fee. Who knows, they might change that in the future. All right, now, which one should you buy? I think it's fantastic that we have options. And while these are very, very similar, you can argue that they serve slightly different populations. So the Ultra Human is obviously for the more budget conscious because you don't have a silly subscription fee attached to it. It's also substantially more comfortable in my experience. I know the 0.15 millimeters sounds like nothing, but I do feel a significant difference between the two. And the Aura is best for those where money is no object. They just want the latest and greatest research back tool for sleep tracking. Again, I'm gonna recommend these as sleep trackers, not as fitness trackers. If you do want a fitness tracker, look elsewhere. And if you are using these for fitness tracking, it's probably because you prioritize their sleep tracking utility and then you just happen to wear them during the daytime because I mean, you already got the device, so why not? The way I'm gonna be using these is I'll be wearing both at night and I'll let you guys know if there's any other developments that do come up, so make sure you're subscribed. And I'm wearing the Apple Watch during the day for activity tracking and for tracking my workouts. If I had to choose one right now, I would go with the Aura Ring, but I think Ultra Human is pretty close. And with a few software and hardware tweaks, they'd be on the same level. While these are awesome tools, there's still a lot more you need to know to optimize your sleep. So check out this video or that one.